Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful day and you are ready to dive into the Word of God today with me. Let's turn our Bible to Psalms chapter 61. Um, I would like to go over the definition of salvation. We briefly talked about it at the end of our devotion yesterday, but we had looked at the word salvation in its original Greek translation means deliverance. It means bringing safely through and keeping from harm. These are words that beautifully describe God, that beautifully describe what Jesus has done. Deliverance, God delivers us brings us safely through whatever it is that life may throw our way and he keeps us from harm's way. He protects us from the things that the world would like to throw at us. In the Old Testament, we looked at the Israelites who experienced the deliverance of God. We looked at David. We looked at the sons of Korah glorify the name of the Lord in the book of Psalms saying that God is the one who delivers them, that God is the one who saved them and brought them through. And again, in Psalms chapter 61, I'm going to read for you verses 1 to verse 3. David here is saying, Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you, I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I want to focus on what David says here in verse 2. He says, Lead me. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Leading David tells us that there is a a path that David has to take. A path. It's not a snap of the finger and a brand new spot. But no, he's got to go through the journey. He's got to go through the trial and he's being led. He's going to climb up and he's being led to that rock that is higher. And this is beautifully reflected in what Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus answers and says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He describes it to be the way. And he says, you come through Jesus. So salvation is not a one-stop shop. It's not one and done, but it's a continuous journey. That's why it's important that even if you have accepted salvation, to revisit what salvation is. Remember, we had talked about this earlier also, that our faith, it's a way, it's a road, it's a journey, it's traveling through life and it's intertwined with grace and laced with grace. But the foundation upon which we walk, what our foot is having confidence in is salvation. It's knowing that Jesus has done what he has done on the cross. It's knowing that the love of the Father was so great that he sent Jesus. It is knowing that while we are on earth, because of what Jesus has done, the Holy Spirit can lead us and he can guide us. Come to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. I'd like to read for you from verse 19 onwards. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest up over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed in pure water. We can have a sincere heart and full assurance of faith that what Jesus has done for us is enough to get us to go closer to God and to cry out to God and to go to the most holy place that he has designed for us. We have Jesus interceding for us as we have studied before. We have him interceding on our behalf and we can boldly go to the throne room of God and ask the Lord of what he Um, of what we desire, of what we need. As we continue speaking of salvation, we are going to look at how salvation is one way. There is one way to salvation, but there are two sides to salvation and there are three stages to salvation. So I look forward to digging in deeper and going through these, these steps as we look at one way of salvation, two sides of salvation, and three stages to salvation. God bless you all. I will see you very soon.